Extreme Collectibles here, really excited for uh, a couple reasons. Uh, one, I have an awesome new statue. Two, I got the mic port. I did some uh, freaking MacGyver engineering on the camcorder and the mic port should be working, otherwise you're just hearing Right now I'm gonna film the entire review and then load it into uh, the computer, start editing and get really pissed. So I was thinking as I was getting ready for this review, some of the reviews nowadays on the different channels, we're not really in competition against each other, but we are a little bit. And we're trying to find new, creative, entertaining uh, ways to deliver content. And some of the other channels are just doing some really cool stuff. So I was trying to think of a way that I could uh, make this a cool review besides doing a lot of the norm and that's what she said jokes. And uh, maybe I was gonna put pants on this time, but I couldn't think of much other than like howling like a werewolf. And I'm certainly not gonna do that even though I keep doing it in my head. So uh, this is just gonna be a normal review, uh, which uh, normal for extreme that is. So let's jump into uh, reviewing this werewolf. Extreme Collectibles here with Quarter Scale Howling Werewolf Statue by Pop Culture Shock Toys distributed by Sideshow. Look how many plugs I just did. So this is a quarter scale werewolf from the movie Howling. The Howling was one of the first horror werewolf movies I saw growing up and it actually gave me nightmares. Uh, Eddie and now in, and because of that it might be the nostalgia, it might be the fact that it's just a good werewolf movie. Uh, there's so many great scenes in there. Two werewolves have sex under the moon. I don't know why that popped in my head as the first great scene. Um, there's just some really cool stuff. Uh, uh, you know, it's the introduction of silver bullets and fire to werewolves. I, I remember one line that is my absolute favorite. I remember it from a kid and I remember it from, you know, I watch it maybe once every other year is when the main werewolf, uh, he's probably not the main werewolf, but he kind of is. Uh, Eddie uh, Quist, I think was his last name, he uh, supposedly dies. Then he comes back to life because he's a werewolf and a reporter and her uh, friend's boyfriend uh, are kind of researching him and finding it out. And then he finds him up on this werewolf farm and I'm not really spoiling any plots, but, uh, and he goes, you're Eddie. And Eddie goes, I'm a lot more than that buddy boy. And then he starts to turn into a werewolf. Pretty cool scene. I was super excited to get this piece. It's been on order for a couple years. They made 300 of the exclusive. The exclusive have an additional switch out head. It's this mouth closed version that you see right here, which we will do a review on this, uh, the sculpt and paint. And then the collector's edition, they made 400 of this open mouth portrait, which personally I like better and it's the one I'm gonna go with when I display it. But as always, it's great to have the exclusive as opposed to the collector's edition. It costs $475 plus shipping, and I don't even remember what shipping is anymore. Even though it's quarter scale, it's closer to third scale, even though the werewolves are pretty large in the movie, uh, which we're gonna talk a little bit about that in concept and design. It is a circular base, so for the most part, it's approximately in uh, 14 inches in diameter. And when I measure, it's really approximate. So go to Pop Culture Shock or Sideshow's website for specifics. And it's right at 24 inches tall. Really easy to assemble, three pieces, base, body, head. Head is actually connected by a really strong magnet. It's a really big head. Again, kind of why I alluded it might be closer to a third scale, which is fine because I'm putting it with some other big horror pieces. But I purchased it because it's one of my favorite werewolf movies. It is uh, just, and they did a really good job on some parts of this. And it's just awesome. I do have a couple other werewolves coming in, some custom, some licensed, but, and I have the Lycan ECC bust from Underworld right over there which uh, it, that's in my theater room tour, so go ahead and check that out. 
The only quality issue I had, and a lot of other collectors had this, is the right foot doesn't sit down all the way. It keeps popping up a little bit, not as bad as some other collectors. You can see the gap right here. It pops back up after time. And then there's a little bit of a seam line, which is expected on the head. When you're gonna have to switch out heads and it's a furry body, it's, it's hard to do that. It reminds me of the Graven Labs Beast a little bit. It's not bad by any means, and I don't know a way to make it better. You don't wanna put a collar on him. But let's kinda of talk about the concept and design of this. So this is from the movie. This is, they did a great job capture, capturing the essence of the werewolf. The likeness is really good, other than some color and some, some fur stuff. But the pose is fantastic. It's spot on. I think the portrait is spot on. Uh, in my opinion. Um, and he's sitting here in a swampy base, which part of it, most of the movie takes place in a forest, so that makes sense. And he's kind of sitting here posing. One mouth is wide open, the other one is closed and drooling. And it does a great job showing those features, the long legs, the long arms, uh, the snout, the ears. I think the likeness is fantastic, and I think they really nailed it on that. And I'm, I'm, uh, that it really excites me. There's some custom howling uh, bust heads by some company on uh, Facebook and they also have a full-size one and they look fantastic and they're three to seven thousand dollars which I can see why the likeness is uncanny I almost got a full scale uh, went for the full scale one but I really didn't have anywhere to put it plus I don't want to spend that much money especially when you can get this for five hundred dollars I'm guessing it's gonna be sold out because it's such a cool uh, it's like a rare piece, kind of like Sideshow's Pumpkinhead. I don't think it'll ever go for that high of a price. I think there's still some available of the collector's edition on Sideshow's website because Sideshow's distributing it. So really, uh, you know, I do worry about the design of it with, you know, this piece. It could just be the weather and the temperature fluctuations. Today I'm filming this on May 1st. It snowed yesterday on April 30th. What the, so, seriously. But let's jump into the paint and sculpt. Um, First starting at the base, on the sides of this base, it almost reminds me of a tree. It's kind of this um, grainy, woody aspect, but not like wood, uh, uh, wood, but almost like tree wood. And there's some weird texture and colors, and I don't quite understand the concept behind this, but it looks okay. It doesn't look bad, the reds and the browns in there. Moving on to the base, the base looks like trash. Uh, the swamp, the goo swamp doesn't look good. Uh, it's this the, the sculpt on it is really bad. The color on it is e even worse. The tree doesn't look like a tree. And I assume, I mean, there, there's no, no tree-like texture, no tree-like paint. Look at the uh, moss that's growing on it. It looks like, looks like after you have diarrhea, after you've eaten some black uh, frosting. It just looks bad. The skulls look okay. I like the cow skull. I like the texture on it. I like the color on it. I like the scale on it. But the human skull, just to the right of it, again, I like, I like it, but it's just as big as the cow skull, which I don't know what world that lives in. But maybe it's a werewolf skull. We could say that because the werewolf's head grows a little bit. And on a side note, one really cool thing about the Howling movie is the transformation process. Um, just like American Werewolf in London, I, I think it did a fan, I keep saying fantastic, I think it did a good job uh, back before CGI and everything to really show that transformation process. It's one of the cool parts about the movie. And then you have some rib bones behind uh, there that look good as well, but the size is a little big. So horrible job on this base. They should have, it's a big, big miss in my opinion. If someone wants to work on a custom base for this, they could get enough people. Uh, or just, you know, it could, I'd rather even have a simple base and paid $100 less. Because uh, this looks bad. It looks like a toy. It looks cheap. It's really heavy, though. So, uh, when we talk about the werewolf, also another side note. You notice I always say we, like someone else is in the room with me. Maybe my empty chair, my partner in my empty chair. Sometimes my children are hiding right behind the camera. Uh, not today. Or maybe they are. You would never know. Just like you don't really know if I'm wearing pants or not. But uh, looking at the werewolf, uh, we're going to kind of jump all over because realistically there's not a lot of different things to look at on it. We're not going to look at different boots or pants or the way his ass is sculpted which is kind of a half tail. But it's, it's just going to be a little bit different. So starting at his feet, I think his, I like his nails. They could have done a little bit better paint job on them. I like the sculpt of it. I think his feet, 
uh, moving all the way up his leg. That's a great likeness to the movie. It's very similar. I like that. And then looking at the hair all over his body, I think the flow of it is very like the movie. They could have done a little bit more on the sculpt with individual strands. And they could have done a lot better with the paint job, the color. They could have added some variation in there. But looking at the legs and here the front and the back, it doesn't look bad by any means. It just looks okay. I think they did a great job on the arms as far as the likeness of the movie. They're longer. Um, they're stretched out. And then again, same with the hands. They did a fantastic job on the hands, uh, matching the movie, the sculpt on them. I like the colors on them, not just the outside where they look like the old man skeleton hands, which is just like the movie, but the long fingernails. And then you can see in here, there's a little bit of padding on the inside. And then starting with the exclusive head here. So the heads have a lot of things, uh, you know, similar to each other, other than pretty much the snout in the mouth. So his ears, very like the movie, very cool. Again, the hair flowing along is very much like a lot of the body, but it's a little bit darker near the face. His eyes are a little bit crossed. I think they shouldn't have done that, but I do like the orange and yellow in there, but it's not an amazing paint job, especially the pupils. They could have done better. I like the sculpt of his snout up on top and then moving over to his nose and there's good paint detail in that. His gums look okay and his teeth look okay. I like the colors they used on the gums. I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the color they used on the teeth. It's almost this urine type color and I think they could have done better with the slobber. It looks like dried glue instead of clear plastic resin. And they did make that moist effect near the bottom of the mouth. And then also it's shiny on the, on the nose a little bit. And then here you see the open mouth, which I think is way, way cooler. I think the, uh, uh, the snout is very similar. The nose has that uh, wet, moist effect. Uh, the teeth kind of have a moist effect too when you put light on them. I don't know if it's just the uh, enamel or not enamel, but the paint coating they used on them, but it looks good. I think the inside of the mouth, the gums are much, much better. They're sneered back. And then his tongue uh, it looks a little weird when you really study it close, but how many people are actually doing that? But yeah, I think the collector's, the regular edition is 10 times better than the exclusive. So I'm almost tempted. Every once in a while I put a switch out piece back in the box. Uh, yeah, box is still open. I think I'm gonna do that and just keep this one out. So very cool piece. It's a werewolf piece. There's not a lot of uh, werewolf pieces out there and I, I, I love werewolves. I wish I was a werewolf and uh, a, a real werewolf, not a, uh, what's the name of the Batman, or not Batman, uh, vampire. Uh, what's the vampire love story werewolf series? I can't even remember it. Breaking Dawn. Yeah, but this is a real werewolf right here. And if you haven't seen the movie Howling and you like werewolves and you like horror flicks, absolutely see it. Just the first one, the rest sucked. The first one is an awesome, awesome movie if you go in with the mindset that this was filmed about 30 years ago. So that's my review of Pop Culture Shock Toys, one quarter scale Howling piece. If you enjoyed the review, please give me a like, please give me a subscribe. Uh, this is gonna air tomorrow morning and I'm really close to my giveaway. We're giving away a Captain America uh, from Daniel Bell. Uh, so instructions on how to do that will come in the upcoming videos, probably in the next week, I'd guess. So just let the cat out of the bag a little bit. And then I have a 5,000 subscriber giveaway planned, which I'm gonna film this weekend. And what I'm giving away is uh, statues that will fill this whole table. I said it. So uh, let me know your thoughts of The Howling. Let me know if you've seen it. Let me know your favorite werewolf movie. That would be cool because I'm sure there's ones out there I haven't seen yet. So uh, thanks for watching. Take care.